There are a bunch of different methods for attaching a normie graphics card to a mini PC these days, and all of them have their flaws. Until possibly now. B-Link's new system for pairing their latest series of GTI mini PCs with a discrete GPU promises to give an almost zero compromise experience using state-of-the-art data transmission technology known as uh, PCI Express. Okay, so I'm being flippant. The EX dock from B-Link is slightly more complicated than a rigid PCIe riser, but not by a whole lot. The dock, featuring a surprisingly svelte and functional design, hosts an integrated 600 watt power supply, two modular 6 plus 2 pin cables for GPUs that require it, and a slightly modified extended PCIe finger. This is designed to interface with the slot on the underside of the GTI series of mini PCs, including the GTI 14 Ultra that B-Link provided for this review, along with the dock itself. Compared to the alternatives on the market right now, the EX dock has several major advantages, and a couple of downsides. Next to its competitors, this dock is about the most performant out there. Thunderbolt 4 is looking pretty outmoded these days, nominally equivalent to four lanes of PCIe 3, minus some overhead. Oculink is becoming more popular thanks to its four lanes of pure PCIe 4 goodness, which is very nice and all, but the EX dock is wired for eight lanes. Obviously, this is still less than the 16 available to most full-fledged desktop systems, but it's also the maximum the mobile CPUs found in most mini PCs actually support. Plus, in these days of corporate penny-pinching, plenty of even quite high-end graphics cards are only wired for X8, so there's a strong chance you won't be missing out on any performance at all. For downsides, the most obvious one is that it's pretty niche. Although the PCI Express connector is a universal standard in desktop PCs, it's rare to find one in a mini PC, and the dock is shaped to fit specifically with B-Link's GTI range, so this isn't a solution for your eGPU needs if you already have any other brand of mini PC, or any B-Link other than these specific models. The shape of the dock allows for any length of GPU to be installed, but is limited to just two slots unless you remove the bracket from the card, and doesn't have any way of adding extra PSU connectors. It also doesn't have any kind of power pass-through, which seems like an oversight, as you now need to use two plugs, or three including the display. The design also leaves the GPU exposed and the PCI power connectors accessible so owners of inquisitive pets or small children – okay, sorry, parents of small children – will want to keep these stored safely out of reach while the dock is in use, or possibly put some kind of protective case around them. Or the graphics card. Your choice, really. The mini PC I was supplied for testing is the top-end model currently compatible, the GTI 14 Ultra, powered by the Intel Core Ultra 9 185H. Now, a lot of you who've been paying attention to the news lately might have just heard alarm bells, but this particular Intel Core Ultra is on a different process node than the troubled 13th and 14th gen Core i-series CPUs. In fact, that's one of the best things about it. I've tested the 185H before and found it to be a fast, efficient, low TDP chip, even compared to AMD's mobile CPU offerings, and the integrated graphics aren't bad either. As far as I'm aware, there's no reason to be concerned about this or any other of the Meteor Lake chips. The 185H is, however, still a mobile chip, in this case configured to 54 watts, and the cooler mounted onto it is effective but balanced for quiet operation rather than airflow. Max clock speeds theoretically reach 5.1 GHz, but in reality the P-Core frequency is usually around 4.5, and even with a full performance graphics card attached, there's going to be certain demanding situations in modern games where the CPU holds the GPU back. The GTI 14 is otherwise specced pretty much as you'd expect, packing 32 gigs of DDR5 and a 1TB Gen 4 NVMe SSD, and with room for a second drive in the mini PC, as well as a slot in the EX dock. 
Other than that and a single USB 2 port, the dock doesn't have any other I.O. of its own, but thankfully the PC has plenty. Alongside 5 USB 3.2 Type-A ports, there's a 10 Gigabit 3.2 Type-C, a 40 Gigabit Thunderbolt Type-C, a display port and HDMI port that I won't be using as I'm using the eGPU, and a couple of 2.5 Gigabit Ethernet ports. Oh, and I mustn't forget my favourite feature, the full-size SD card slot. You may be thinking this looks quite large for a mini PC, and it's true, this is significantly larger than most other mini PCs in this class, and it's for one main reason. The 145 watt power supply is integrated into the body of the PC, meaning all that's needed to plug it in is a standard figure 8 lead. The extra heft also allows for dual built-in speakers, which aren't the worst I've ever heard, but obviously there's no stereo separation, making them essentially useless for gaming. Dismantling the PC to get to the RAM and M.2 slots is a proper noise, with a ton of screws holding in the dust filter, power supply and speakers, all of which need removing to access the internals. B-Link don't sell this as a bare bones unit, so it will only become an issue when it comes time to upgrade the RAM or SSD, but it does pretty much rule out adding an Oculink M.2 adapter if, like me, you already own one. What I wouldn't give for a glory hole. Wait, no, I meant I've run the GTI 14 through my usual set of mini PC benchmarks for the sake of completeness, which I'll go through at the end of the video, however the star of the show is obviously the EX dock. To see how well it works, I'd normally whip out my RTX 3080 Ti, as I did for my previous eGPU tests. However, this chunky EVGA FTW card needs three 8 pins for power, so instead I'm using the Radeon RX 7900 XT. I did find a weird bug in my particular GTI 14 Ultra, whereby the CPU throttled with the eGPU attached. This caused the Cinebench score to be cut in half and severely affected gaming performance. You may not experience this if you buy one, I've watched a few other reviews and no one else has mentioned having a problem, but if you should have the same issue as I did, there is a fix. Go into the BIOS, in the Advanced tab go to System Agent, Graphics Configuration, Internal Graphics, and turn the iGPU from Auto to Enabled. I fed this bug back to B-Link, so hopefully it will be fixed in a BIOS update if it hasn't already, but yeah, bit of a weird one. On a modern Ryzen desktop with this GPU installed, Forza Horizon 5 can ordinarily churn out about 145 FPS at 1440 max settings. On the other hand, plugging that same GPU into a mini PC via Thunderbolt will gut the frame rate by almost two thirds to less than 60 FPS. This is exactly the kind of problem the EX dock is designed to overcome, and it does phenomenally well, giving a 136 FPS average that's only about 6% below the desktop. This is one of a select few games I went back and retested with the TDP set to 65 watts rather than the stock 54, and it almost eradicates the difference from the desktop, though the 1% lows in both configurations are a little lower than the Ryzen test rig, and that will be a running theme in this video. Likewise, Starfield is a great experience moving from a full-fledged gaming PC to this hybrid mini PC setup. At 1440 Ultra with no upscaling, the game runs at a 70fps average, within margin of error of the desktop. Alas, the 1% lows let things down, causing a little choppiness at times. I thought that increasing the TDP might help, but the extra 9 watts of headroom didn't do all that much, so perhaps being a bit braver while messing around in the BIOS settings would make things run a bit smoother. The trend continues with Horizon Forbidden West. The average frame rate is just a smidgen below what the desktop could achieve at the same settings, maintaining a very impressive 99 FPS average at 1440 very high. Again, the 1% lows let the side down somewhat, dropping to 72 FPS compared to 92 on the test rig. God of War is still a new release at the time of writing and will inevitably need some more patches to reach its final form, but the version I'm testing is the latest available at the time of publishing the video. From what I've heard, Ragnarok can take issue with older CPUs, but I'm not seeing any problems with the 185H. At 1440 Ultra, the GTI 14 and 7900 XT can achieve almost 89 FPS, 
with 1% lows of 65, putting it functionally equal to the desktop PC. Not all games hold up quite so well. The Last of Us Part 1 is another title that goes heavy on the CPU, and the 185H can't quite keep up with the 7900 XT. Even at 1440 Ultra, utilisation occasionally drops as low as 80%, and the average frame rate is just 82 compared to the Ryzen 5 desktop chip at 105. On the other hand, the Thunderbolt dock only manages 64 FPS at these settings, so there's not too much to complain about. Probably the best case scenario I've seen so far is Black Myth Wukong. This game doesn't appear to be held back at all by the Ultra 9, or even by losing out on some PCIe bandwidth. The benchmark result from the B-Link combo isn't just equal to the desktop at 74fps, it's actually almost a frame higher. As we're almost completely GPU bound, increasing the TDP doesn't seem to help at all. Space Marine 2 doesn't usually make it to my graphics card tests, because in scenes with swarms of enemies on screen at once, it's mainly held back by the CPU. At 1440 Ultra we're only seeing 63 FPS on average, and turning on the maximum amount of FSR only increases that average by 5%, so you're not likely to get a high refresh experience with this mini PC, even with a next-gen flagship GPU installed. Not that the EX Dock's 600 watt PSU could actually handle an RTX 5090, if rumours are to be believed. There's not much CPU headroom here for anyone looking to max out a 240Hz monitor in esports and competitive shooters. While the 7900 XT itself is no doubt capable of hitting well over 200 FPS in Apex Legends, with the frame limiter removed, the Ultra 9 won't make the most of it. The average of 210 FPS at 1440 max settings is still great, certainly good enough for my monitor, but the GPU is still not being maxed out. Finally, CS2 is another CPU limited title, and one that doesn't particularly benefit from more cores either, so it's not surprising that the results here are similar to those from another mini PC equipped with an Ultra 5125H and an RTX 3080 Ti over Oculink. Average FPS at 1440 low is 167, with a 1% low of just 82. With the TDP turned up to 65 watts, it gains almost 10% on average and about 15% of the 1% lows, but probably not enough to excite the average CS2 enjoyer. Can I see this newfangled PCI Express thing catching on? Well, yes and no. I'm sure we'll see more of B-Link's mini PCs featuring this connector, and more power to them. They are, in my opinion, one of the better companies out there making them. But if they were open to allowing other mini PC brands to use their docks, that could be a good thing, as the EX dock is a great value. Value overall, however, is the big question. The GTI 14 Ultra is pretty excellent for a £700 mini PC, and can be bought in a bundle with the EX dock for less than £800. As someone in the comments has almost certainly pointed out by now, you could build an ITX PC using current gen components for a similar price, or even cheaper using previous gen parts, and it would no doubt perform as well or better. But if you're not a PC building enthusiast, or you have a use case where undocking the PC from the graphics card is beneficial to you, no, I can't imagine what that would be either, or you just really like mini PCs, this is still surprisingly good even for the price. 
you can save even more money with the GTI 12, which swaps out the Meteor Lake CPU for an Alder Lake one. And I'm not the biggest fan of these particular mobile CPUs. My experience with other mini PCs using 12th gen chips in the past has been that they get very hot and throttle pretty quickly. And I for one would pay the extra to get the newer generation chip for that reason alone. But if you don't use your computer for particularly CPU heavy tasks, it might be a way to shave a couple of hundred off the cost. For my part, I'd really like to see them make a version using a Ryzen CPU next, especially for helping drive those high FPS competitive shooters. If you'd like to see why I think that would be a good thing, check out the video on screen now. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.